Hi everyone, so here we are, ready with a new video, my second sim racing video, now including some more focus. Last time out I talked a bit about uh, R Factor 2, a bit about sim racing in general, and a bit about myself. And you may remember that I also talked about the historic content in R Factor 2, particularly the 1968 version of Spa, which excites me very much located in the foothills of the Ardennes Mountains. Oh yeah. For those of you who remember the old F1 Challenge sim from EA, very cool stuff. Good old sim. But uh, yeah, this track, the historic version, will be the main focus of this video. And what you'll see is me racing the EVE F1 car on Spa versus the AI, set at 110% strength, which means it'll get pretty intense at times like hold your breath and hold on for dear life intense to be exact. There'll be a lot of dodging, crumbled, burning cars, flying wheels, suspension, flying hay bales, road signs and other flying debris. So lots of dodging, lots of stuff flying around. So it's good stuff. To most R Factor 2 users this track and car combo will be what you'd call old news, but um, that doesn't matter, not to me at least, because this kind of racing will never ever get old. Not in my world it won't, at least. And this video is mainly pointed at new users who haven't got around to the historic racing yet, or maybe even people who haven't ever driven R Factor 2 yet. And this will be a good, uh, a very good place to start. I'm guessing that uh, people who love the old um, GP legends um, will uh, probably want to try this sim out too. Uh, people who have never driven historic cars and sims could very well use this as a starting point, as I said. Because uh, it's amazing. It's just amazing. Nothing else to, to say about it. It's amazing. Nothing beats the feeling of racing the EVE or any other of the old F1 cars on this track. I'll describe the track uh, from start to finish to try and give you an idea of what you'll encounter on your way around. Um, both a bit of uh, cornering technique uh, and also things you need to be aware of in a racing situation. So yeah, kind of a little uh, track guide while you can watch the racing uh, unfold in the background. So yeah. You'll come blasting down the start-finish straight after getting the power down, coming out of the source. The car will reach uh, quite high speeds because the drop is quite steep. Plus you'll have that nasty slippery yellow line to your right. So you need to be aware that you don't uh, get your wheels onto that line. Everybody knows this next corner combination. It's one of the most iconic combinations in all of motorsports. It's Eau Rouge and uh, Radion. And what makes this corner very unique is the fact that the elevation is so massive when you enter it. It simply feels like a roller coaster, which is awesome. And Michael Schumacher has said that the corner feels like climbing a mountain. So, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty accurate. Eau Rouge and the Radion is um, really challenging in this old version of Spa. Much more challenging than uh, than the. the than the modern version because it feels a lot more tight uh, than it does these days and uh, also because there is zero runoff area. Uh, there are walls, stone walls, nothing else. You need to keep uh, a lot of momentum going into the first part of the corner uh, and it's uh, quite a bit faster than you'd expect. The close walls and blind angles are really deceiving you simply have to decelerate, decelerate sorry, uh, to the uh, adequate speed and uh, just chuck it left as close to the barrier as you can possibly get. It's a bit like uh, Taba uh, in uh, Monaco, actually. Another blind corner where you just have to chuck it in without knowing where you'll end up. Uh, you just have to trust that your speed is adequate and uh, that you apply the adequate amount of steering power. And I found that going into a whoosh uh, in uh, third gear is quite good. The lower revs means uh, that the car don't slide as much 
as it would do in second gear. And there's still plenty of torque to get up that steep climb. When climbing the last crest, the back end will step out, so be uh, very wary of that. The car will go so light and it will want uh, to wander out to the right of the track, so be aware. And uh, what is to the right of the track? The white sticks of evil that will bend your suspension and end your race before you can say white sticks of evil. Again, be wary. Um, okay, so uh, we made it through the first hurdle. Uh, now we just have to keep the throttle mashed for a while, going down the camel straight, which isn't really straight, but yeah, the camel bends, I guess you should call it. Uh, you have to be alert, because the car wants to go off to either side at such high speed. Uh, the white sticks of evil will claim your life before you know it. Mm, there are also slippery lines to contend with along the track. The AI is also very, very aggressive here for some reason. And they'll gladly chug it up the inside and go side by side through the bends. The next big challenge you'll face is a pretty tight left-hander called Le Col. Uh, again, we have zero runoff, and if you as much as scrape the barriers on the outside, the car will likely take off and end in the forest. It will most likely be on fire too. So brake late, um, and be careful not to lock up as you are turning slightly right while braking. If your speed is high enough, that is. Uh, you'll be able to carry uh, a lot of speed into the corner, if, and if you're uh, and if you're ready uh, to apply some opposite luck, uh, you can get on early. Uh, you can get the power on early as well. And the rear might snap, especially if the tires aren't up to temperature. Don't even think about setting as much as half a tire on the grass on the right, uh, because the white sticks of evil of doom are to get you. So, on we go then, through uh, Eau de la Côte, approaching uh, Burnenville, don't know how you pronounce that. <laughs> uh, this is one of the most exciting parts of the track, no doubt. An insanely long fast right hander with uh, spectators, houses and hay, hay bales on the outside of the corner. The likelihood of the AI crashing here on the first lap is very big, so beware. If an opponent chooses to attempt an overtake on the outside, it'll most likely end up in misery. If you're in the middle or in the back of the pack, be sure to be in a position where you can quickly break and take avoiding action if necessary, without losing control ending your own race, that is. Make sure to dodge hay bales and fly flying debris as well. Um, your suspension is very fragile. Malmedy is uh, high risk as well both in the start of the race, but also throughout. This whole section requires you to really keep your foot planted, making sure you don't uh, start to lose front-end grip and uh, oversteer straight into hell. If you feel the front start to lose grip, just uh, lift a bit off the throttle. It'll give you a little bit of oversteer. And don't brake. And you, you just don't brake because you'll die. When you uh, make it uh, through this very critical part of the race, you're good to go. We're going to have a drag race for 2.4 kilometers, but it's a very bumpy straight, so you, you really have to hold on. Make sure to be close to the AI when coming out of Malmedy, um, so you can slipstream. Otherwise, you'll spend the next half a lap playing catch-up. You need. To uh, you need to drag all the way down the straight and uh, build up your speed, overtaking as many opponents as, as possible. Okay, this is it then. Uh, the mother of all challenges. Hold on to your hats, because uh, the next hurdle is one hell of a corner. Actually a double corner, an ultra-fast left-right combination called Master. After having accelerated for what seems like forever, over two kilometers, your car will be at maximum speed. So you need to look out for the yellow marker boards to your right. You can play it safe and lift or brake a bit at uh, 200 meters, or you can be very brave and wait until 100 meters. It's up to you. But you need to be aware of how you handle this kink. 
um, and you need to be aware that this very kink will make or break your lap time. But again, you'll come a long way with uh, just surviving. It's what these kinds of races are all about. It's about surviving. Jackie Stewart was nearly killed here in 1966 and in 73 a marshal was killed here at Master. It is truly one of the most dangerous corner on a racetrack ever, I'm sure. So entry is almost blind as well, mm, plus your car is shaking so violently because of the bumpy tarmac. You need to pick your corner entry very wisely. Too soon and you'll hit Satan's little white sticks of evil on the inside, race over. Too late and you'll most likely understeer straight into solid fencing. Again, race over. If you carry too much speed through the corner or let the car wander even in the slightest, chances are that you'll be spat out to the left, straight into the electric poles. Yep, you guessed it. Race over. Master is also a very common place for the AI to crash on the first lap, so be careful. On lap 1 I always make sure to break 200-250 meters before the entry. This way the AI can have their little party up ahead and I can then crawl through unscathed. You're still in one piece and the race goes on. Good stuff. You'll now have to negotiate another 2 kilometers of steep downhill straight. Your speed will climb quickly because of the descent. You are now approaching two very fast right-hand corners called Hollowell and Stavlo. Again, you have a big house on the outside, but this corner is very interesting because you can put two wheels on the inside of the corner and gain great speed through there. Use fourth gear and keep the speed going because you have a long full throttle straight coming up after the next right-hander. Um, you need to keep the full throttle uh, through there and uh, hug the inside while making sure you don't scrub too much speed off which is important too. Uh, you don't want to be losing uh, speed all the way down the next straight um, and the left hand kink is pretty fearsome because of the telephone poles on the outside. The AI crash here a lot so be careful when they attempt passing maneuvers especially on the outside. La Carriere is a fantastic right-hand corner taken at nearly full speed. Again, you can exploit the inside of the corner because there's a bit of asphalt. The slippery yellow line will pull the car to the right, giving you a bit of oversteer so you can really carry some speed through there. The next right-hander is a bit tighter. I find third gear usually works through here quite well. Evil things await you on the outside if you carry too much speed though. Again, telephone poles, fences, barbed wire, all that good stuff. So coming next is the fearsome Blanchimont, left hand corner. You'll get intimidated by the fact that the guardrails are so close, but you need to just focus on taking the corner as fast as possible. Lift, a little break, and on the gas before you know it. The next left-hander is uh, a lot tighter, so second or maybe third is more adequate. So we're nearing the completion of the lap, but first we have to dodge death once again, coming down what we know today as the start-finish straight, at least in F1. There was no bus stop chicane back in the 60s, um, so you enter the straight at tremendous speed through a little left-hand kink. The car has a tendency to understeer here, and if you understeer, you'll hit a bunch of hay. So keep the front in check, and the rear in check for that matter, and prepare for one of the uh, only actual braking zones of the entire lap. La Source is, and was back then, an actual hairpin. Um, this means you'll have to decelerate down to first gear um, to make the tight turn. Be careful when accelerating too, you need to go gently and slowly, on the throttle and consider short shifting too. Maybe even staying in, in second gear for the hairpin. Um, so that's it. It was uh, one lap of spa in its old murderous 14 kilometer layout. This was the layout used between 1947 up until 1978. And too many uh, deaths and too many injured drivers resulted in the, the track being shortened considerably and rebuilt. Um, it was still very dangerous and risky business racing the track up until the 80s and 90s, however. 
uh, a shorter track doesn't necessarily mean a safer track. And Stefan Belov, uh, he lost his life in 1985. Uh, Girana uh, died in uh, 1990. Uh, Alex Sanadi uh, had a concussion in 1993 when he shattered his car in Rouge. Uh, Jacques Villeneuve and uh, Ricardo Santa both uh, they both went off in, in qualifying in 1999, but neither were hurt. Amazingly. Santa's crash could easily have ended up with them. serious injuries, though, because his car flipped at very high speed, hitting the barrier while being upside down. Yeah, it was very scary. And it looked quite a bit like Greg Moore's crash at Fontana a couple of months later, where he hit the barrier head first, having, after having flipped. So yeah, dangerous stuff. Well. I think I am going to round this off for now. I hope you learned a thing or two. Maybe you can teach me a thing or two. I'm sure you can. Um, and if so, you can use the comment section below. I hope people who haven't tried this track and car will do so. Because uh, it's amazing. And I can't stress enough how awesome a job ISI have made here. Nothing in sim racing comes close to this. If you're looking for historic racing, or any kind of racing for that matter, you need to try R Factor 2. If you already own it, uh, you need to uh, revisit Historic Spa and the Historic Formula 1 cars. You also have um, Historic uh, Monza and uh, Monte Carlo, and uh, you have a bunch of historic uh, cars and uh, a bunch of, uh, a couple of really good uh, third party historic tracks like Longford. So there's plenty plenty to do. And oh yeah, when you get a grip on a lap in the dry on the historic spa, try, and try going for wet weather racing. Just remember to breathe. <laughs> and see you guys and uh, I hope you enjoyed.